Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti. I am MrPhotographer.com. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate to you my Lightroom Wildlife workflow for an image that was previously rejected. We're going to start out with this rejected image and end up with an image that looks like this. I took this image maybe two or three years ago and it was one of the many rejected images from that photo set. If you're like me, you probably have a lot more rejected images than you have keeper images. The reason why I rejected this image at that time is because obviously the light is horrible. It was really flat lighting. Also, because the light was so bad, I had to use a relatively high ISO. So there's a considerable amount of noise in the image. Well, in my opinion, they've really uh, improved the noise reduction capabilities in Lightroom. And let's see if we could make this look halfway decent. Now, I'm just going to go through my typical workflow, the way I go about doing things. I've covered my workflow in the past. Of course, it's evolved over the years. Usually, what I like to do first is crop. Now, I'm thinking I may want to crop this square because we have all this like space over here, this like a tree or something. And it might not look right, but I'm not exactly sure if I really want to do that. Maybe I want to keep that there. So typically I would crop right now, but I think I'll wait. So I'm not going to crop. I'm just going to jump right into the tone adjustments. First of all, the white balance is okay. I'm not going to do anything with white balance right now. I may just warm it up a little touch, but right now I think it looks okay. So I'm going to jump right into the tone. And I'm just going to bring highlights down just a little bit so I could see that I'm getting detail in all those feathers. Then I'm going to open up the shadows. So I made the image like look really flat. Now I'm going to try to bring some of that contrast back with my whites and blacks adjustment. I'm going to hold the Option key in on my Mac. If you have a PC, it's the Alt key. Click on the white slider. Everything turns black. Start pushing that to the right until I see some colors coming through and you can see I have some blue coming through then some white. The blue means I'm clipping the blue channel. The white means I'm clipping all three channels. So I don't want to clip any channels because when you clip the channels that means there's no detail at all there and I want detail in those white feathers. So I'll back that off till all that blue dissipates. Now I'll go to the blacks and I'll do the exact same thing. I'll hold the option key in on my Mac. It's Alt if you have a PC. Press in there. This time the screen turns white and you can see I'm already clipping a little bit along the bottom but I don't mind clipping the shadows that much so I'll I'll move that so we have some clipping there um, I like my images to have absolute black in them and almost up to absolute white that in my opinion gives my images a nice tonal range all right so I did tone adjustments so I have it looking okay there's before and there's after so in my opinion that looks pretty good. Now, typically what I want to do now is reduce noise. I like to do a noise reduction very early in my workflow. To tell you the truth, with Lightroom, it doesn't matter because Lightroom, kind of everything gets uh, worked together in their uh, processing engine. Uh, but if you're using an external noise reduction program, definitely do it right now. But in Lightroom, it doesn't matter. But for me, just for my eyes and the way I like to see the image, I like to see the noise gone early so that when I start adding contrast and sharpness and things like that, the noise, um, I could see how it's affecting that noise that I got rid of, if it's bringing it back or not. You'll see more as I do it. So I'm going to jump down to the detail panel. Now, you'll notice everything is zeroed out. Typically, with most raw files from cameras, when you import them into Lightroom, uh, Lightroom will add a default amount of uh, sharpening and noise reduction. I have mine set so that when I import images into my Lightroom, uh, everything is zeroed out. And I do have a video that demonstrates how you could change your import defaults so that this doesn't happen uh, or that you have it go like this. Also, I have it so it automatically uh, adds lens corrections when I import the image. It's not a preset, it's your import defaults. And again, I'll have a link to that video uh, in the description below this video. So I want to reduce noise right away. I'm gonna zoom in and it was a pretty high ISO. I think it might've been around 1600 and I'll have all the camera 
um, gear and settings and all that stuff listed in the description below this video as well. So uh, color noise is prominent. I'm going to get rid of that first. And you'll find that typically you don't have to move this slider very far, uh, usually between 15 and 25, and it will get rid of it all. Right around 19, all that color noise is gone. Those are just really usually red, yellow, or <laughs> red, green, and blue dots uh, in the image. And then, you know, it's gone. We still have grain, but it got rid of that noise. Now for noise reduction, there's a considerable amount, so I'm going to push that up pretty high, uh, like 60. And that smoothed it out really well. I'll go down to 50. Now, I don't really need to eliminate it completely. I just want it reduced because it is a trade-off. When you're uh, eliminating that noise, you're also smoothing out the image and you're going to lose some detail, like in the bird's eye and things like that. And I don't want to do that. Um, I think right around 50 looks pretty good. I could rescue some of that detail with this detail slider by pushing that to the right. And I think I'll do that as well. Also with the detail slider and the color. Uh, section I could do that as well so I think that looks all right for now I may come back in and readjust that but I think that looks good I'm going to zoom back out so I did tone adjustments and I did noise reduction now next I usually like to do either color or um, add some contrast to the image so we're going to go with contrast first and typically I don't like to use the contrast slider I prefer to use the tone curve I just feel I have a little more uh, control with the tone curve than the contrast slider. The way I do it is I'll put a point right in the middle and then I'll go down to the shadows area and I'll pull that down slightly and just add making the shadows a little darker and then I'll go up to the highlights area click there put a point there and push up a little bit so I'm adding a uh, little brightness to the highlights so I'm bringing up the highlights and down the shadows and by definition, that's contrast. When you're making the lights lighter and the darks darker, that's contrast. So there's before and there's after that adjustment. Now, the reason why I said I feel like I have more control here, if I feel the whites are good, but the darks are a little too dark, I could just come in and push the darks up a little bit, right? Or vice versa. So I have a little more control. And that's why I prefer to use or do this adjustment here. So I like that. Um, Next, I think I'll um, do sharpening before I do color. Sometimes I'll do color adjustments now, like I'll uh, add vibrant saturation. I'll go to the HSL tab and do things like that. But I think right now we're going to do sharpness. Now, to me, sharpness also embodies clarity, texture, and sometimes dehaze as well. So I do it in um, order of the amount that the sliders affect meaning clarity affects big chunks of the image texture smaller parts and then sharpness uh, sharpening the smallest parts so I'll start with clarity and I'll move that to the right then I'll go to texture and move that to the right now I'll zoom in look at the noise the noise is still under control I'll go to the detail then and I'll zoom in somewhere like right in here and I'll move that to the right and usually I like to go like on a whole number like 60 50 well they're all whole numbers but uh, a number in the tens 10 20 30 40 50 60 something like that and I'll go to like 60 I'll look at it um, radius I think is going to be fine everything but I am getting a little more noise in there so I'm going to tweak up the noise reduction a little bit to like 60 and I think that looks pretty good so we're going to zoom out as I zoom out, it looks a little bit over sharpened, so I'll bring sharpening down to like 50. And I think that looks pretty good right now. Typically, what I would do is walk away from my computer and let my eyes kind of reset and rest and then come back and look at it because it still might be over sharpened. Sometimes your eyes and brain get a little bit fatigued looking at sharpness and it, it tends to numb you and it will be over sharpened and you don't realize it. So I'm even going to bring that down. A little more to 40 assuming I have it over sharpened even though I don't know for sure so I like that now now I'll do color so I'll go up to the basic tab and um, for when people are in the shot I prefer to move vibrance because vibrant won't affect skin tones as much so it will increase the um, saturation of all the colors 
but it won't do skin tones quite as much and it won't oversaturate anything. When there, when there isn't a person in the image, I tend to like to do the saturation slider instead, but you have to be careful with the saturation slider because it will, will oversaturate colors that are already saturated. The beak on this bird is pretty saturated. So as I move that to the right, you can see it's starting to look even at, you know, just a nominal movement here, like at what, like 25, that beak is not looking realistic anymore. So I'll pull that back down and then we're just going to move vibrance to the right, just to bring out some colors. All right, now what I want to do is it's really dark in here and everyone is going to look at this image. They're going to look at this bird's eye because it looks relatively fierce. So I want to brighten that up a little bit. I'm going to start out with a radial filter and oh, what I'll do is I'll invert it and I'll bring exposure up a little bit and I'll keep saturation up and I'm going to bring out the radial filter in this area here. Now I'm going to rotate it and maybe make it just a tad thicker. Now I, I want to move, if I drag this in, it drags both ends, the left and the right, it drags them out. I actually, actually have another video on how to um, uh, affect the handles on a radial filter. If you hold the Alt or Option key in, Alt if you have a PC option, if you have a Mac, and then click on this, you'll just drag that one end out. And I'll have a link to that video in the description below as well. That didn't work well because I let go too soon. There we go. There we go. That's better. Now what we'll do is we'll brighten that up just a little more. Bring that up just a little bit more. Hold that alter option key when I do it. All right. All right, that looks decent right there. So what I'm going to do is I'll close down that radio filter. I'll jump over to the brush. And what I want to do with the brush is I'm going to have um, exposure up just a little bit and saturation up just a little bit. I don't want to misrepresent what the bird looks like. I just want to uh, have it look as though there's some light in this bird's eye when there really wasn't any light in the scene. And I'll get a brush that's just big enough to brush in here. And I'll brighten this up a little bit. And that's actually way too much. So we'll bring that down. So it's still realistic. I, again, I don't want to misrepresent what that bird looks like. I just want to change what the light actually looked like in the scene. Uh, so there's before and after. You can see it's super subtle. Uh, hopefully you could see that. I'll zoom in. There's before. And there's after. So I think it's still representative of what that bird actually looks like. So there isn't an issue there. Now, um, I don't think I need to do anything in the HSL uh, panel. The colors are natural, fine, everything there. Now let's make that decision about cropping. Uh, my knee jerk reaction when I first looked at the image, because it really was off to the side, and this large uh, area over here. Uh, might be distracting, uh, even though one could consider that maybe negative space, although it really isn't. Um, it still doesn't look right to me. So I'm going to go to the crop tool and I'm going to go to this little drop down and go to one to one. And then I'm going to move it this way. And then I want this rule of thirds line to go right over the bird's eye. So I'll bring it down like that. I'll move it this way a little more so we get more of the bird's shoulder in the shot. Like that. And let's see what that looks like. I'll close that down. Yeah, I think that's a much tighter composition. Now, um, I'll finish it off. I'm really pretty much done. I'm going to add a vignette, but I don't think this vignette is the one I want to add. You see how it's just so even and equal all around the edges? And it actually is bringing out this area more than I want it to. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a radial filter uh, for the vignette. So what we'll do is we'll take invert off. We're going to pull exposure down and we'll reset saturation. And I'm going to come in and bring it over the bird like that. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the left panel and I'll go to um, I want to go to 1 to 8 so that we could see it better. I'm going to rotate it. 
I'm going to, I want to pull this side down without pushing that side up. So I'm going to hold the Alt or Option key in, Alt or PC Option if you have Mac. So we can pull that down. I can pull it right off the screen like that. Oops, didn't want to do that. Undo. Clicked on that other filter. So we'll redo this and hold that Alter Option key in. Pull this down. There we go. Got to make sure you're clicking on the correct filter when you have more than one radio filter. I'll tell you the truth, I forgot I added that other radio filter. And we'll hold the Alter Option key in and pull this down this way. And hold that Alter Option key in and push that in that way. Reset it that way. Now I'm going to go back to our normal fit view. All right, and then we'll darken it around those edges a little bit. And uh, let's do a before after the radio filters. There's before those radio filters, there's after those radio filters. And I think it does bring the bird out a little better. Um, I, I kind of like that. I think we'll go with that. Um, that's it. I guess I'm done. Uh, so that is uh, the before image. It doesn't, of course, include the crop. And there is the after image. Before, after. And as I look at it, I think the eye is a little bit too intense. Um, I think I might have overdone that. So I'll go back, back to this brush adjustment uh, that I have here. And I think I'm just going to delete it. All right. And... I don't, again, I don't ever want to misrepresent wildlife or even animal in a zoo or anything like that. There's before and there's after. Yeah, I think that looks much better. So that is how I go about trying to rescue an image that I rejected in the past that I thought wasn't good enough uh, to, you know, process or share or anything like that. Thank you, everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.